Welcome to the quarry site of Othniel Charles Marsh, where you'll see the burial grounds of some of the most famous dinosaurs in the world. But before we head up the trail, take a look at this sign beside me. This plaque was donated to Garden Park by the Canyon City Geology Club in 1953 and is actually registered as an antiquity. Take a look at the dinosaurs. What three mistakes can you find? Well, for one, this sign is supposed to represent the dinosaurs found at the Marsh Quarry, which is Jurassic in age. T-Rex here comes from the Cretaceous, about 70 million years later. Brontosaurus isn't called Brontosaurus anymore. It's now referred to as Apatosaurus. And did you get the hardest one? Look, all the dinosaurs are dragging their tails along the ground. And we now know that dinosaurs didn't do that. Even with the mistakes though, this plaque is really important historically because it tells us a lot about the paleontological history of the area. Now as we start up the trail, the first point of interest you'll see is to your left. The Marsh Quarry area is important, and not just because of its paleontological significance. It has a special ecosystem that supports a species of plant that isn't found anywhere else, so it's been designated as an area of critical environmental concern. Now let's head further on up the trail to the first major stop, the Marsh Quarry Overlook. The Marsh Quarry officially opened for dinosaur hunting business in 1877 when O.C. Marsh started paying Marshall Felch of Canyon City to dig for dinosaur bones during the summer in order to keep up with his arch rival, Edward Drinker Cope. If you'll pay me $75 per month and furnish me with the tools I need, I'll work through the season for that price and board myself. It is as cheap as I can work and less than Lucas gets. And I think I can do as much of that work and as well as he can. If you decide to set me to work, let me know soon that I will fix my own work and arrange about getting my farm carried on. Now you see that U-shaped outline in the cliff face behind me. That outline is in the shape of a prehistoric stream bed that existed here during Jurassic times. Now the reason that we have all these great dinosaur fossils in the area is because of that stream bed. You see, in times of drought, the remaining water would pool up in bends in the stream where animals would gather to drink. If a dinosaur didn't survive the drought and it died near one of these pools, its body would get covered in sediments when the rains returned. Sad news for the dinosaurs, but good news for paleontologists. Now before we dig any deeper into the Marsh Felch Quarry, let's head a little bit further up the trail. Make sure you brought your good shoes, a bottle of water, and above all, your bug repellent. Let's go. Along the way, you might see the evidence of eons gone by, such as dinosaur tracks or the molds of dinosaur bones. Here we are at overlook number two, where you can really get a good idea of what Marsh's quarry looked like. Felch didn't have as easy a time removing dinosaur bones as Cope did. The bones here were brittle and encased in hard sandstone, and back then, every bit of rock was removed with hand tools. Felch's frustrations were evident in his letters to Marsh. There was such a mass of rotten ribs, crushed vertebrae, etc. I could not tell one from the other. I'll send you the one piece that I am sure of. Felch got frustrated and closed the quarry less than a year after it opened. But somewhere down the line, he had a change of heart and asked Marsh if he could reopen it. And Felch was right to reopen that quarry. From this quarry come some of the most famous dinosaur fossils ever found, including nearly complete skeletons of Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, and Stegosaurus that are now on display at the Smithsonian. Over 250 crates of fossils were sent back to Marsh. Despite his numerous hardships, Felch continued to work the quarry until 1888 when it closed. And then he reopened it for a third time in 1899 for the Carnegie Museum. His passion for paleontology shone through in his enthusiasm for the hunt and his willingness to never give up. You might say some of the great paleontologists of our time have caught a little bit of Felch's spirit. Despite his lack of formal training, Felch was a true paleontologist and a real naturalist, and science owes him so very much. Thanks for walking the Marsh Felch Quarry with me today, and I'll see you again soon.